You are listening to Mining Stock Education, where you'll learn from the top leaders in the natural resource sector and uncover quality mining investment opportunities. Thanks for tuning in to Mining Stock Education. I'm your host, Bill Powers. And in today's show, you will be hearing from Dudley Baker of CommonStockWarrants.com. He's a returning guest. We haven't spoken with Dudley in about six months, so I'm uh, looking forward to getting his updated perspective on how he sees the junior resource market. He has an excellent resource, a database that covers all the available tradable warrants, not only in the mining sector, but in various hot sectors. He also covers this whole movement and the warrant tradable warrants that are available with these SPACs, these uh, special purpose acquisition companies as this market has been very hot for the last year. So with that, Dudley, welcome back onto the show. And since we last spoke about six months ago, uh, the mining sector obviously was a lot hotter back then, but in this uh, six to eight months of trending downwards and a little bit sideways, how have you been managing your own portfolio? I'm still a buyer. I'm a buyer. No, welcome. Uh, I'm glad to be back with you, Bill. Yeah, no, it, I think anybody with cash right now just really has to be looking for opportunities. And I'm going to I'm gonna kind of really briefly showcase like five different uh, names, and I'll give you the symbols, guys. And so uh, if you got a pencil, you know, uh, get ready. It, it's going to kind of be bullet points here. But I think these are five really interesting situations in the in the junior space. And I think that's prim- primarily where our, our listeners are coming from and, and the level of interest here. The first one I want to mention is ARIS, A-R-I-S Gold, uh, symbol A-R-I-S, now on the Toronto Exchange. The company itself is interesting, uh, selling at $2.26. Uh, they have a, a warrant that's got about a four and a half years remaining life that's uh, closed yesterday at $0.82. Cents. Uh, this is formerly Caldas Gold. We are now down in Colombia. They did uh, in early April, uh, February uh, a name change, a management change. Uh, Grand Colombia Gold still owns approximately 50% position in Aries, but now we got Ian Teffler came in, a really savvy group out of Vancouver came in and said, we want to, in essence, in my my language, they wanted a piece of the action. And they came in and now they are heading up the management. And I just think, what a cool story this is for power players in the business. And here we got this little uh, producer already down in Columbia. If you don't like the warrant, you can buy the common for $2.26. The warrant is, is roughly uh, 88 cents, 82 cents. Uh, I'd say just put it on your radar screen. You got about a four and a half year remaining life. Pretty interesting story. The the second one uh, is is called Gold Mining Royalty. Now, Gold Mining, uh, you know, it's headed up by Amir, a G-O-L-D, on the Toronto Exchange. They did a, a spinoff. One of their subsidiaries uh, went public on the New York Stock Exchange just within the last week or two. And it's called Gold Mining Royalty. Symbol on that one is G-R-O-Y. Again, we're on the New York. Interesting thing for me, they had a warrant attached to that offering. So a three-year life. So the offering was at $5. Uh, the common is, is still trading just shy of, of $5. Uh, the warrant's got an exercise price $7.50 with a three-year life. So again, if if you like that story, that that's of interest to me. Uh, I would like to see the warrant less than, say, 82, 88 cents, but I've got my eye on it right now in, in these soft markets. There's no telling what's going to happen here in the coming days. Uh, two other ones that uh, that are just companies uh, that without warrants, you know, what I call my gold subscribers and my lifetime subscribers, they get to see my entire portfolio. And so some of them may scratch their head and said, Dudley, what the hell are you doing here? What are you doing there? I mean, why would you be in this? Okay, so the first one is called New Range, R-A-N-G-E, Gold, New Range Gold. The symbol is N-R-G on the venture. Uh, Closed yesterday at 13 and a half cents. What got my attention here is an old friend, Robert Archer, that used to be the CEO of Great Panther Silver uh, down here in Mexico. Robert heads up new range gold now. He retired. I guess he couldn't stand being retired. He needs to get back in the game. That's what everybody, this is what you do. You come back into the game. And so I'm in probably at 11 and a half to 12 cents. Uh, 
Last summer, this one was probably selling well up into the 40 cent range. And now in the softness that we've got in the mining stocks, it's really come back down. It's a small expiration play, but in Nevada. So again, I like the story. I like the management. And that's what I normally do. I follow the management teams and all the management here has got nice, really nice positions, personal positions in, in the shares of New Range. The other one that probably a lot of people have heard the name is Orex, O-R-E-X, Minerals. Uh, symbol is R-E-X on the venture. Closed yesterday, 16 cents. Uh, Eric Sprott has over 50% ownership of Orex. And right now, uh, same way, last August or so, this was probably in the 50 cent range. And now you can buy it at 16. It's like, and nothing's happened. This is just like an incredible basket of exploration plays. Uh, a lot in Mexico, I think we've got a few up in Canada, but basically a lot of a lot of activity going on with this little Orex mineral, minerals. And I always look at it, any of these things that I'm talking about that are down in the pennies, my upside objective, I'm always the guy that's looking for 10 baggers, potential 10 baggers. So I can easily see this at a dollar, two dollars in a rip roaring market, you know, with Orex, same way with the new range gold. I just see that we could really have the potential to make a lot of money and buying something really on the cheap here. First thing I always do is always look at a long term chart. How what is the longest chart you can get on any of these names I'm looking at? And you can see yourself where they've been historically. You can see the lows. You can see what, what's the peak back at the, like last, uh, in, was it 2011 or so? And see how high these actually went. Get a gauge. Then the question always, well, do you think you could do it again? Well, maybe so. Maybe so. But at least we got a target that we're looking for. And the last one, the warrant has, some, there, there's, there, it's Aurania. A-U-R-A-N-I-A, -A -A, resources. They've got a project down in Ecuador. They, uh, a A R U uh, is the symbol. Uh, there's one warrant trading right now. They're doing a placement uh, almost as, as we speak. It's, it's going to be closing uh, April the 8th. And there will be a, a new warrant attached to this, uh, this offering. Uh, and, and that will have a three-year life. And so it's always hard to anticipate what's it going to, what's that warrant going to sell for? Is it going to be a good deal? Is it not going to be a good deal? We'll really only know as, as the market starts, you know, once that deal closes and the warrant starts trading, then we'll kind of have a feel of what's happening. But that's, uh, that, that's one in real time that just hasn't been, uh, hadn't come out yet, but worthy of, of putting on a, a radar list uh, for anybody. So anyhow, five that, uh, uh, Auranian is the only one that that I do not have a current position in, and I'll be looking at this new warrant when it does come out. And you have no business relationship with any of those companies, right, Dudley? No business relationship. I just, uh, yeah, I, I'd have to say I just kind of love the management, uh, and I've got positions uh, in in all of those top four that the first four that were mentioned, and I'm really comfortable being a either a shareholder or, or a warrant holder on all of those. And, and I'll point out that you're an expat living in Mexico. So for my listeners, especially those that have headphones on listening to us uh, converse here, those are roosters and chickens in the background, aren't they? Sounds like a damn ice cream comp, uh, truck or something coming down the street right now. And forgive me, I cannot block it out, guys. I mean, it's like, no, and I wake up to chickens in the morning and, and all kind of stuff. It's just, this is not the ideal place to be. I love being one with the people. Now you can live up on the hill and you get away from all this and the beautiful view of the lake. But I just love being down here in the village and one with the people and uh, kids playing on the street. But at any moment, any noise can appear and, there's, and I have no control. So forgive us if you don't appreciate that. <laughs> Well, I appreciate your willingness to share some of uh, where, where you see value. And, and regarding your portfolio, Dudley, what percentage is in warrants and what percentage is actually in equities in terms of the junior mining portion of your portfolio? You know, I haven't ran that number recent, Bill. Uh, yeah, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to think it's, uh, you know, I had one really large position that I closed out uh way before year in. And that would have probably said that I could have easily had 50 to 60% in warrants. Uh, Cause I had one big six digit number and one, and I thought that's that warrant. And I, and I guess I tell the story it's on e Equinox Gold. And I loved Equinox Gold, still love the story. 
I still own a few shares in Equinox Gold, but the warrant will expire this October. And at the moment, it appears that warrant's going off the board at, at zero. It will expire worthless. Uh, and so I started and notified all of my subscribers that last, uh, somewhere over the summer, we started get, getting out of there at 80 to 90 cents. Now, right now, we're down at about 22 cents, probably. And you can just see the writing on the wall, unfortunately. You know, we all hoped like hell that before now we'd had a month to rally in gold and silver. And Equinox would have performed and those warrants would have come on up. But I had uh, at, at least a quarter million of those at, at one time and thought this is going to be a home run. Because I'm sitting here thinking this is going to $3, this is going to $5. And I realized it's not going to happen. And, you know, you have to make tough decisions, you know, company that you like. Uh, but you have to realize it's not going to happen. You cannot go down with the ship, you know. You liquidate, you know, I still made really good money because I was in the warrants pretty, really, rather cheaply. And, uh, but I, I think looking back right now, that was a great heads up to subscribers and hopefully nearly everybody is, is, is what got out in, you know, the 60, 70, 80, maybe 90 cent range. Uh, and, uh, and all should have made some really good money. Fury Gold Mines is a Canada-focused exploration and development company committed to aggressively growing its scalable, high-grade gold assets with major drill campaigns planned across its 3.5 million ounce portfolio. Fury is led by a management team of proven explorers and developers with a track record of success in advancing and financing project development. Fury Gold Mines is well positioned to create value for investors with low-risk development growth and the potential for a new major discovery. Fury Gold Mines trades on the TSX and NYSE American under the ticker F-U-R-Y. To learn more, go to furygoldmines.com. That's furygoldmines.com. So on that note, do you sell your gains in the warrants quicker than you would in the actual equities, or at least sell half to get your initial capital back if it doubles? You know, you would think so, wouldn't you? But no. I mean, I'm the guy, I always say it, it's a trade-off. And I've never argued with somebody that, that wants to take monies off the table. But if I've still got, let's say, two or three years of remaining life, and I still see the upside potential, and, and more, not only in the company, but obviously in the environment for the mining space. Uh, and that's hard to to. It's hard to really predict that long term, you know. I mean, you can see on Equinox Gold, this this is this is an incredible growth growth story, you know, with great management. So yeah, that story's going to go on. But what's the price of gold and silver going to do? That's going to affect the price of that com those common shares, and that's just beyond probably what most of us can anticipate. I mean, who the hell knows? Three to six months from now, we may like it to be substantially higher but that doesn't mean it's going to be substantially higher but uh but yeah i'd have to i'd have to say i'm probably sitting right at the moment of at least 30 to 40 percent uh in warrants uh i like those to be longer term warrants but uh but yeah i i just uh i'm i'm about as bullish as the next guy and i'm not sure what the catalyst is going to be that's going to take uh, you know gold and silver uh, back up on on this next leg up, get us back over two thousand. Not really sure. And you know, I I think what we'd realize is that you know some of the probably the uh, a lot of the talk in the marketplace is is shipped over to Bitcoin. You know, and probably a lot of the guys maybe they maybe they're buying Bitcoin instead of buying gold. And the deal is, especially the younger generation, you know, probably like you as opposed to me, where I'm still the old gold guy. And and uh, and don't fully understand all the Bitcoin stuff, uh, and and even if I understood it, if I, I had a wealth of, of knowledge today, how much would I put in as an investor into Bitcoin? For me, that's going to affect my portfolio. Am I going to take you know twenty twenty five percent of my net worth and go into Bitcoin? I don't think so. Not at this price. Now, if we were down at the bottom, yeah. And so, you know, today just Elon Musk comes out, you know, with Tesla, you know, where they're going to take, uh, they're going to accept Bitcoin uh, if you want to buy a Tesla from them. And I'm thinking, well, yeah, he's got a monster position in Bitcoin and Bitcoin, you know, was rallying like hell on this news. Well, that's, I think that's great for the, for Bitcoin. But if I was a Tesla shareholder, I'm thinking, I'm not sure that's a good deal. Is that good for Tesla? 
because they've already said they have no intention if they take if they take Bitcoin for the for the sale of a car, they have no intention of converting that Bitcoin to currency. They're going to hold it. Okay, well, we just know the volatility that we've seen in Bitcoin. I, that's why I guess I have a hard time when we start, you know, thinking Bitcoin is a currency because look at the volatility. My God, what would the what would we do if the U.S. dollar had that same volatility? If the Canadian dollar had that same volatility, how does a businessman plan a business not knowing what that you know that that currency, at least close, is going to be worth? We know everything is 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 uh, is variable every day, and, and value is going to change. But uh, yeah, but it's pretty staggering what what's happened to Bitcoin. And I say anybody that's in that game that's made a lot of money. Kudos for you. That that's just wonderful. That's just wonderful. And I'm if I say I missed it, well, I missed it. You know, I'm not sure every investor can say we got it all. You know, ever will. <laughs> yeah. But but there is an interesting story here. Is that maybe the younger players are going to Bitcoin? Maybe they're just taking some of the big interest off of the gold and silver. Uh, I'd like to think before the end of the day, everything's going to get back into balance, and gold and silver will have their recognition uh, once again. And we'll still have a big upside potential. Well, Dudley, could you give us an update on the SPAC market? That's something you cover. And it's like some of the gains, example gains that you put on your website are astounding. You know, 35 per times your money in a year on some of these warrants on the SPACs. Yeah, no, it, it's, been a, it's been an interesting situation. So now at Common Stock Warrants, we do cover all of the SPACs, which are now, oh my God, seven, seven, eight hundred, seven or 800 SPACs. Uh, so we're tracking everything, and 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 substantially all of them do have warrants that will trade. That warrant, the life will not even start until five years after uh, uh, a merger is announced. I mean, then that warrant will have a five-year life for me. And uh, so, no, one of the most recent ones, uh, some of our listeners may know the story about Churchill Capital and Lucid Motors. Okay, so this, this is a potential one day the rival to Tesla. And uh, this was rumored. Michael Klein hits up uh, Churchill Capital. Uh, this was number four, I think. And he's done a, mul uh, a whole bunch of, of the SPACs. Uh, we were able to get in not knowing what would happen. We come in before the news. So it's kind of betting on the management team. And uh, we were in that warrant. Uh, I know my, personally, I bought it like $1.31. And my son was actually in a little bit cheaper than that. And uh, it went on up to almost $40. Deal was not even completed. Deal is still not completed. It'll probably be completed next quarter. Well, I, I end up, uh, you know, I sold some at, at $14. I sold some, at, I got rid of some almost at the peak around $37 plus. Uh, the day before it came down, I'm thinking, wow, I was so close to really being a smart SOB because I would have liquidated my entire position substantially at the top. But I've still got a small position, small position meaning a, a few thousand of the warrants, and I'm still am holding a, a couple of thousand of the common shares because I still think this is still going to be a great story going forward. But when you had the opportunity, let's say with us, and 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 they're in quote this math, mathematical basket that we calculate every day. So this Churchill Capital happened to be in the basket. Uh, flagging, I mean, flashing by me, by me, by me, not knowing what was going to happen, but it met all of our mathematical ratios that my son has developed. And, uh, and yeah, then, then the rumor started and then it took off and then it got confirmed. And, uh, but yeah, to, to be able to buy anything like that, just say in the dollar 30 range, have the potential uh, other friends bought it. They they kind of panicked. You know, some panicked early at around nine dollars, ran on up to fourteen. Somebody sold at fourteen, and then it, then it doubles again. You know, or triples. It's like you, yeah. So nobody has the holy grail to know exactly what's going to happen. Uh, but the deal is, it, if you're in, it's all about buying at the right price. You know, whether whether this is now a, a spac or the warrants on the specs, whether this is a mining company. You basically got to be in on the cheap. You got to look at a chart and feel like you're in at a great price, so you can get a big multiple. This story develops like you want. You get the big multiple. If you're waiting, and a lot of times if you wait for the news, that the, the action's already over. 
you know, you're the guy buying closer to the top. And that is never me. I just, I just don't, I just don't follow that. I, I mean, I'm, I'm in on the cheap. I'm anticipating that something's good going to happen. Either that means uh, why I'm in there because I'm either following management, you know, and thinking they're going to, they're going to pull this thing off. And I fear, feel like if you're following the management, they're not going to make money unless I make money, or I'm not going to make money unless they make money. We're in bed together with this thing. And if I buy it down on the same level that I feel comfortable with, that's a, a core base. I know we're going to profit together on this situation, you know, and, and specifically in these the Orex and new range gold and, and things like this. I just, uh, no doubt in my mind. Now we don't know, is this going to happen next week, next month would be next year, but I'm, I'm confident on all of these plays that they will be home runs, you know, by anybody's standard of, of measuring, you know, whether you're looking for a hundred percent gain, 500% gain, maybe you can get 10 baggers out of all these things. I don't know, but they do all have that potential. And that's a game that I, I like to play. I'm in here to hit, hit home runs uh, as opposed to, you know, trying to make five, 10, 20% a year. I'm, I'm looking for these opportunities that let's just say can kind of change your life, not just, you know, add a little extra income, but can literally change your life if you hit a home run. And, you know, with a 500 or, or a thousand percent gainers or more, if you're lucky. And uh, yeah, so that's, uh, I like to think that we're going for a home runs. Everything I look at, we're going, we're going for the fence. You're going for grand slam, Dudley, you're not going for home runs. You're going for grand slams here, right? Grand slams, but it's amazing through the years how many of these you you, you do get, and and you're and you so it ends up paying off, and not all of them will be the grand slam. Maybe you'll end up with a lot of doubles and triples out of here, you know, and that's okay too, you know. So yeah, no, exactly, no, it's it's rare, and the only way you kind of strike out doing the warrant game is that if you hold it too long, you know, and like like with the Equinox goal, that's just the best example in the world. Love the company, love the management. Uh, it's going to be a growth story for a long time. But that damn warrant that started with a five-year life is going to go off the board at zero. And and so that's just, you just have to accept that sometime. And you got to get out, exit, go somewhere else. And uh, don't get don't get all hung up on staying on board because, you know, never want to go down with the ship. Anyhow, a lot, a lot of this is just great time. Anybody listening to me uh, from my standpoint, you know, with the current situation in the mining space, uh, the SPACs are pretty much taking it on the chin right now. All of them. It's not a company specific, but they're they're for one reason or another really got tied to the NASDAQ uh, in the United States. And right now that's uh, the softness in the NASDAQ uh, and they're all going back down today. So we, we've had a couple of really rough weeks. But what this is, it's all setting up incredible opportunities. And I'm in here buying something virtually every day. Excellent. Well, if you're intrigued by what Dudley says, head on over to his website. It's commonstockwarrants.com. And you'll find more information about what his service offers. And you'll see he posts on the homepage there a lot of the success stories that we've talked about, whether it's the mining sector or the SPACs were 35 fold in a year, which is uh, quite amazing. And Dudley, any anything new over there you want to point out before you, we conclude here? No, no, just 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 opportunities, opportunities everywhere, in in my opinion. So just, uh, but I'm excited. I'm always excited because I find opportunities everywhere. And uh, yeah, my my son basically is running our, our new operation with the SPAC warrant index that we call it. <laughs> And uh, just kind of letting people in little by little. We don't want too many people coming in at any one time uh, because we kind of got a mathematical formula and we just we don't want hundreds coming in at a time that may, you know, on a given day, mess things up. So it's kind of a trickle, trickle, trickle that kind of managing how many new subscribers can come into that space. But on our website, you'll see multiple different you know, kind of services that we offer under common stock warrants. But uh no, it's, it's, it's fun time, interesting time to be uh, an investor with some cash right now. All right. Well, thank you for joining me today, Dudley. Much appreciated. Mm-hmm.